Box. Where's my box? Do you have my box? Welcome back. Do you sell children's toys? Or more specifically, Nimbat dolls? A Nimbat doll? You mean like your flying friend there? I don't believe we have anything like that in stock. But I aim to please. I'm certain I could craft one for you, assuming I had the proper materials. Let me see. With some cotton, fabric, and dye, I'm certain I could make a wonderful Nimbat doll for you. I gotta say, Dust, I'm feeling a little uneasy about this whole thing. What's to feel uneasy about, Fidget? You're adorable. I think I might have him make another fidget doll that I'll just hang on to. Forever. I don't know you anymore. Ah, excellent! You've brought all the materials! Would you like me to make the doll now? Wonderful! Now, if your companion will just lie down on this fabric... Hey, you're not tracing me! Oh, well, I do need some sort of measurement. <laughs> we don't see many nimbats around here. Here, give me a pen. I'll draw it myself. Okay, there. Done. See how well I've captured every nuanced curve? Ah. Uh... See? You can use this to measure your doll. It's perfect! <laughs> no, it really isn't. Actually, that's the worst drawing I've ever seen. Just shut up and make this stupid doll. Okay, okay. Just give me a moment. Uh, some cotton here? few stitches there. Uh, maybe a little more cotton up there in the head area? I don't think you're accurately capturing the pure size of Fidget's head. My head is just fine. You're the ones wearing those stupid hats. Maybe you two could form a stupid hat club. And voila! Another happy customer. And I even had enough material to make an extra one. No, oh, I wasn't expecting to actually get one. I guess I'll just have to carry it around. Forever. I actually feel bad giving one of these ugly things to Smobop, but here we go. I'm not talking to you anymore. Please, let me- I'll keep my- Much appreciated. Okay, Smobop, here's a fidget doll for you. Better than the real thing. Ooh, she's pretty. Here, you can have this. Thanks, Smobop. Hmm, <laughs> Bob gave it to me a little while ago. He found it near the surface, I think. Well, thank you. 
Enjoy your fidget. I love my doll. I love her so much. Love, love, love. Transaction is no. Here are those materials you asked for, Fail. Great! Here's your payment. If you're willing, I could use your help again. I'd like to upgrade our weapons. Beast spears, while primitive, have finely chiseled stone tips that we can use for arrowheads. If you could bring me eight beast spears, I'll buy them for a high price. Reed, it's just a box. Just a box? No, no, it's not just a box. Didn't you hear it whispering to you? The whispers, the lies. I'll say. They told me the box was filled with cupcakes. I opened it up and nothing was inside. Oh, oh no, 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 you opened the box. Why did you open the box? I told you not to open the box. Quick, take it back. I can't hold this. Hey, what are you doing? I thought you wanted your box back. I went through a lot of trouble getting that. Yeah, we had to find this girl in Mudpaw and then make her a doll that looked like me, then trade the doll for the box. Honestly, it was a bit roundabout. Do you know what you've done? You've unleashed the power inside this ancient prison, and now it will consume your very soul. Okay, Reed, I really think it's time you went inside and got some sleep. I think... Wait... What's happening to me? There's something... something wrong with me! Reed, what was that? What's going on? I feel... I feel... weak. Like something sucking the life right out of my body. Then it's already started. Oh, why did you have to open the box? I said not to open the box! Look, let's not dwell on the whole who opened the box thing. The box was open. That's in the past. We can't change that. We should be focusing on the future, and, you know, less about me. The presence inside this box, it latches onto your soul, tries to take over your mind. The only way to stop it is to break the barrier between body and soul. In other words, Dust, you will need to kill yourself. Raid! It really is the only way, Dust. You mustn't take too long, or 
Or you could end up like me. You know what? I love this plan. I'm happy to be a part of it. <sighs> Shut up, Fidget! I can feel my life draining away every moment. Reed, what do I have to do? Travel outside the village, pick a fight with some monsters, and lose. If you do it in time, the presence latched onto your soul will be shaken loose and returned to the box, and you will return back to your normal self. That is, assuming you do it in time. Dust, you can't seriously be considering. Fidget, I don't have time to argue. I can feel it draining my life away. We need to get out of the village and fast! <laughs> As soon as I took that killing blow, I felt something, like a weight lifted. We should check in with Reed. Yeah. The sooner you get rid of that box, the better. Please, let me... I'll keep my eye... What? You were right, Reed. Somehow that killing blow managed to shake the presence free. I'm back to my normal self again. I'm glad that's the case. Anyway, I was planning on using this revival stone on you if my plan didn't work, but it should still serve as an adequate reward. Wait, what do you mean if your plan didn't work? Well, it did, didn't it? So now I have no use for this revival stone, and you can take it. Hopefully you'll never have to use it. Yes, well, you keep that box under lock and key. We're just lucky that kid down in Mudpot had the common sense not to open it. I will never let it out of my sight again. It's my burden to bear, after all. Good luck, Dust. What else whispers to me? No. No, it can't be. The trees? The trees themselves whisper an ancient song! Somebody must chop them all down to silence their lies! Goodbye, Reed.
Wow, I don't believe it. Dust? Dust, is that you, mate? Augustine? What are you doing all the way out here? Why, I'm heeding the call of grand adventure. Venturing forth to seek my fortune in the wilds of this great, untamed wilderness. Actually, Cora asked me to show her the way to some old meadow. The Sorrowing Meadow. Right, that's it. Never was straight with names and faces and words. Did she say why she wanted to come here? This place is pretty... bleak. Nope. Just asked me to show her the way. Soon as she wandered into the meadow, this crazy magic barrier showed up. Right inconvenience, that is. Looks like we're not getting up these mountains, then. You say Cora just wandered off into the meadow? She may not look it, but she's a speedy little bugger. Right. Well, we'd better go look for her. This meadow isn't safe. Augustine, if you're not going to go back to Aurora, you'd better wait here. Way ahead of you, mate. I wait around better than anyone. Good luck out there. this far together and you're surprised? But it has evil knife hands! Evil knife hands! Be careful, Dust!
outside Aurora, remember? Old Cora, they call me. I think it was crazy, old Cora, actually. Yes, I remember you now. What are you doing all the way out here? These meadows are dangerous. Bah! I've known these meadows since I was young. There's not a creature here that could harm me. I'm sensing some delusions of grandeur here. There is something odd about this part of the meadow. Almost as if the creatures are avoiding it. If that's the case, then you should be safe if you stay here, Cora. Well, that's impossible, my dear. I'm not here to sightsee. I have a task to complete, and I will not be leaving until it is done. Crazy! You really shouldn't be wandering around here. What is it you need to do? Maybe I can help. Oh, I couldn't dare impose. It's a dangerous path. And you've done so much for Aurora. I'd hate to ask more of you. No, it's all right. We're searching for the lord of this estate. I've been told he can help me. Perhaps while we're searching for him, we can find whatever it is you're looking for? Really, then? Well, then our goals are aligned, my dear boy. If you do truly wish to speak with the owner of this estate, then you will need to help me. What is it you need? There are four mansions in these meadows. Within each mansion is an item of great personal importance to me and my... Well, the master of the estate. Take this green resonance gem, my dear. You can use it to travel around these meadows much quicker than I ever could. Dust, I'm still not too comfortable leaving an old lady here in the middle of nowhere. Neither am I, Fidget, but she seems to know what she's doing. Yeah, but... do you? Is that it, Cora? Four items, four mansions? Honestly, sounds pretty simple if you ask me. For all our sakes, my boy. I hope you're right. Uh, what's that mean? Why'd you have to say it like that?
Transaction is... exists in a place that I cannot reach. Run! So, is that who Cora was talking about? Well, this Cora woman better start explaining herself. I can't take any more of this.
trends.
That's all of them. I'm sensing a pattern with these items, but we'll let Cora explain. Let's return to the center of the meadow.
right, Cora. I found your four keepsakes. Now, will you please explain what's going on here? Oh, this painting and the ring. My goodness. I'm sorry, Dust. You see, these were my husband's. Many long years ago, this was my home. You lived here? Whoa, you must have been loaded. But wait, if you lived here, why wouldn't you move all the way outside of Rora and into that tiny shack of yours? It makes no sense! When my husband died, the estate fell into disrepair. All the servants abandoned us in a single night. My husband, you see, was not the most pleasant of people to be around. Then, of course, there was the source of his money. What did he do? He was something of a war profiteer. He would give the King's General information about Moonblood sympathizers and receive money in return. Our friends, our family. Nobody was safe from his treachery. Let me guess, that general's name was Gaius. Why, yes! How did you know? Just a pattern I've been noticing is all. So wait, you're saying that demon we've been seeing is... My husband, Cain. His rage has consumed him, and now he is trapped in this place, consuming the souls of wayward travelers to become ever more powerful. With my own life drawing to a close, I knew it was time to put things right. But I fear had you not come along, I would not have been able to find these items and free him. So, what do we do now? We've got your four watsits. Is that it? Please tell me that's it. Will these keepsakes quell his anger? They are meant to remind him of all the good things he left behind. Rage will become regret, and that will be the time to strike. Wait, strike? Strike? You mean we need to fight that thing? Is there no other way, Ara? Unfortunately, no. The power of those keepsakes will weaken Cain's rage. But we must sever the demon from Cain's spiritual form. Continue attacking him and the connection should break. Then I can cast the demon back into the darkness once more. Prepare yourself, Dust. Dust. His state has calmed. The rage that consumed him has been driven back into the darkness. Cora? Cora, is that you? Yes, Cain. Yes, it's me. Is it done? Have you come back to us? Oh, Cora. I have done such terrible things. I betrayed my friends, turned them over to General Gaius for money and power. My life, this mansion, everything I ever owned was bought with the blood of those I loved. It's okay, my love. I know. I know everything. That is why I left you. But I have come to help you set things right once again. I am so sorry, Cora. I should have trusted you. I should have told you. I just... I thought you would abandon me. I thought the one good thing I ever had would 
leave me to die alone. I'm here now, my love, and I will never leave you again. And you, robed one, you helped drive that demonic presence away. I owe you a debt of thanks that I fear can never be truly repaid. Actually, you can repay that debt right now. You worked with General Gaius, and I aimed to drive him from these lands. I was told you may know something that could help me find him. Well, that's easy. Simply go where there are moonbloods. Their last remaining encampment is hidden far to the north. If General Gaius knew where it was, he would personally lead the charge to wipe it off the map. Do you know where this hidden camp is? Nobody does except for the moonbloods and... But no, that's impossible. What? What? There was a village of moonblood sympathizers in the mountains. I revealed their location to General Gaius. Everyone was supposed to be killed, but before I died, I remember hearing that a survivor had escaped to Aurora. Ginger? You're talking about Ginger? I'm afraid that's all I know. If you can find this Ginger, perhaps you will find your moonbloods. From there, you only need wait for the General to find you. Then we'd better hurry, Dus. Ginger's already got a head start on us. But what about the barrier? The work of the demon that imprisoned me, no doubt. With your twin souls, it likely did not want you to leave this valley before it could devour you. Twin souls? What are you talking about? You did not know. You possess a rare gift. Two souls joined as one. Never have I seen it before. Ara... What does he mean? I... Soon, Dust. Very soon, all of this will be explained. Come. We can discuss this later. We must hurry if we are to find Ginger and learn the location of this Moonblood camp. You're right. But we can't just leave Cora here. That's all right, dearie. I've not the strength to return home. And I would rather spend my final hours catching up with my dear husband by my side. I cannot thank you enough, Dust. You've done more for us than I could possibly have asked for. I knew there was something special about you the moment I laid eyes on you. Thanks seem a paltry thing to offer in return for the deeds you have done here today. But they are all I have to give. I do hope you are able to find your friend in time and that General Gaius is made to pay for his crimes against this world. Then farewell, my friends. Good luck to the two of you, in this life and the next. Dust, reality check. Did we just exorcise a demon from beyond the pale? That we did. Hopefully the two of them finally find some semblance of peace. Anyway, let's get moving. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Thank you, Dust. You must stop General Gaius, no matter what the cost. Thank you for all of your help. Don't worry about me. I'll stay here, by my husband's side. So, the great traitor has finally found everlasting peace. The great traitor? You're talking about Cain? My kind does not utter his name. His actions ended many innocent lives, and while his spirit may be absolved now, we remember only his life and the tragedy it wrought. He seemed truly remorseful for his actions. Perhaps he was. Perhaps we were to accept his remorse. This would not bring my family back. Let us not dwell on his wicked actions any more than we must. Very well. Your transaction...
I just knew standing around here would pay off. That barrier couldn't take it anymore and just shattered. <sighs> Good work, Augustin. I knew I could count on you. Are you heading up the mountain? This is a long way up, but the old road was blocked off ages ago, so you don't have much choice. Don't worry about us. You stay here and guard these rocks. I'll take it as a personal challenge. You and me, Dust, we're gonna save the world. Hmm. <laughs> 
set off another avalanche. Don't look at me. You're the one who can't fly. Yes, but you're the one with the big mouth. Hey! See a way up, but I won't be able to reach those ledges without some help. Let's look around. Maybe we'll find another way to tackle this cliff. Hold back, Fidget.
Sorry, Dust. I don't think you're double jumping over that. Stupid avalanches ruin everything. Go ahead, name me one good thing an avalanche has ever done. Well, now that you mention it, this might be a crazy idea, but maybe we can clear some of the snow off of that mountainside. You mean, make another avalanche? That's the idea, yes. You're crazy. I love it. Really? Do I need to be the voice of caution here? Need I explain how creating an avalanche puts us all in danger? It's really the only way, Ara. Yeah, Ara, it really is. Is it? It is. Very well. Let's do this thing! Well, that did something. It sure did. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we find another one. Huh? That obviously wasn't enough. We need to break more pillars. Fidget, I think the bitter cold is creating lapses in your judgment. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I'm perfectly... perfectly... <laughs> Dust, be careful. Watch overhead. The snow is not the only thing you are shaking loose. Two. Not, not enough. Yeah. Not enough. We'll need to find more if we're going to wear away that snow. We really should get you someplace warm, Fidget. I think you're coming down with something.
your trend. Ah. Your transaction. Just stop. Oh, I think I'm coming down with something. Yes, it is. We figured that out on our own. Come, Dust. Let us continue. presence has been stirred by your actions. Let's not keep it waiting then. snow down from the mountain. All right, give me a second. Great, that should keep it cold for Bopo. I'll be sure to give it to him if we ever find ourselves back in Mud Pot. Clear. Onward and upward. I knew that this was a bad idea.
your trend.
your trend. There... there was a road here. I remember it. Before that day. Look! Up ahead! A village! All the way up here? Do you think it's that Moonblood camp Kane was talking about? No, it's something else. It's... En enough talking. Let's get up there. Halt! What? No. Impossible! Cassius! What did you call me? Who are you? What are you doing in this place? You... You were dead! No. No, this is not possible. I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer! Kill this... thing! want any of this. Gus, what are you talking about? And who is Cassius? That's not... It's not my name. I remember it. I know it when I heard it. <laughs> Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? This was Ginger's village. I was here one year ago. According to Fuse, according to Ginger, I helped murder everyone in this village. Oh, dust. But I don't remember any of it. I remember this place, but it feels like it's been more than a year. Ara, what does it mean? It only means that things are not as they seem. Explore the village further, Dust. Let us see what secrets it hides. This house... Do you remember something, Dust? This is impossible. Dust. How? Do you see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. The answers lie above, Dust. Ginger. She was sleeping right here. On the night I came to say goodbye. But... I hesitated. I didn't want to wake her. Didn't want her to worry about me. She couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust, what are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, you're... But how? What's going on here? I... I remember now. But how? How can I have helped destroy this village? but be a victim of that same act. That's impossible. Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. Who are you? I am Elder Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, 
What's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They're Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, to suit our needs, we required two souls. The soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that fated day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. You murderer! My parents did nothing wrong! You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king, an act of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village, murdered my friends and family. You will not survive this day! I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are djinn, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday, that he would come back. But could you really be him? Ginger, I don't know. I... I don't know. Now, Dust, I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. Who, or I guess, what am I? You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust, created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, we would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin, just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen, and Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. You say that, but in all cases you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land and even helped two old souls find peace once more. 
You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes, now you are here. And we can finish this fight once and for all. Who was Fuse? He said he was a Moonblood, but he looks nothing like you. Fuse. He was once a fine warrior, and a close friend of Ginger's family. He would help transport goods between this village and our camp. After the village was destroyed, I guess he lost his mind. He was horribly disfigured after the attack. The only way he could survive was in a special suit of magical armor that I helped to construct. He demanded we attack General Gaius right away, but I would not hear any of it. He would have killed us all in the name of vengeance. We would not have stood a chance. When I refused to send our warriors into battle, he called me a coward and vowed that he would destroy Gaius with or without my help. I fear the very armor we made to save his life had corrupted his mind and body beyond repair. Poor guy. If only we could have gone through to him somehow. No, you're right to kill him. If he had remained alive, there's no telling what damage he could have done. Ginger is right. Fuse was beyond saving. For all our sakes, I hope the same is not true of the world he sought to protect. How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium. Ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. Surely, as Nimbat Sword Guardian, you've studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I may have skipped over that chapter? You haven't answered my question. The Blades of Elysium were created to guide their sword bearer's dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure a balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend. It is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood camp to the north in the Everdawn Basin. That isn't anywhere near the Everdawn Volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, I know. How about a peaceful meadow? Or a quiet forest? Or some place that doesn't explode every ten minutes? Dust, your friend seems awfully tense. No, I'm fine. Come on, let's go to the Blowy Up Mountains. Really, I'm serious. Fidget, you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you, really? I am... I... Uh... You see? You still haven't figured it out yet! Lizard guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know! Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> if I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following. And why. I understand, Fidget. You're right. I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it. It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's Dust. That's who he is. That's who I know. Fidget, please. I can't do this without you. 
Can you, uh, can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry, I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there. General Gaius? What news, Commander? I did not want to believe it, but Cassius is working with the Moonbloods. He has turned against us. That will be for me to decide. Our paths will cross at the Moonblood camp. Of that I am certain. I will speak with him personally. Is that... wise? Our victory is all but assured, Commander. We outnumber them ten to one. We possess superior technology. And we have the element of surprise. But why welcome this rogue element? He has already slain your own soldiers. What more proof do you need that he is a traitor to our cause? Cassius is hardly a rogue element, Commander. The Moonbloods have corrupted his mind, forced him to commit these acts against us. Once I can speak with him, once he remembers who he really is, I'm certain he will return to us. But... <clears throat> yes, sir. As you wish. Cassius, my old friend, so long as you draw breath, I will do what I can to save your broken mind. I promise. Are you Sarahi? Don't worry, I'm a friend. Please, just stay back! Sarahi! Mosca? Mosca, is that you? Yes, Sarahi, it's me! Oh, Mosca! Denim was destroyed! Everyone was killed! I... I was so scared! You don't have to worry anymore, Sarahi. My friend Dust here, he stopped that menace in Denim. Those monsters destroyed my home, Mosca. I... I don't know what to do. We'll go back to Aurora, okay? You and me. 
We'll figure something out. Will you two be all right? I think so, Dust. Thank you. For everything. A single survivor in the whole village. One is better than none. Come on, let's get out of here. Here are those materials you asked for, Fail. Great! Here's your payment. If you're willing, I could use your help again. There's a rare material out there that I've heard can be distilled into a very strong lacquer for armor. Of course, I'm talking about slime. If you could bring me four slimy spikes and four slimy coats, I'll pay you handsomely. I'll uh, even throw in a little extra since it's likely to be a bit, uh, well, slimy. Here are those materials you asked for, Fail. Great! Here's your payment. If you're willing, I could use your help again. Those hides you provided worked out great. But I'd like to reinforce their armor with materials from those Hulkin giants out there. If you could bring two giant rocks and two giant cores, we'd be all set. I'll pay you way more than you get by selling it to the shopkeeper. Here are those materials you asked for, Fail. Great! Here's your payment. If you're willing, I could use your help again. Those reinforcements really help strengthen the guard's armor, but now it's a bit too rigid. I'd like to add some flexibility using a few materials you can only find on flying pink avies. Let me see. Uh, six avi wings and six avi claws to do the trick. I'll pay you for the work, of course. Corbin, I've managed a 1,000 hit combo. I knew you could do it, Dust! Someday, I'm gonna be just as powerful as you, and then I'll be able to get a 1,000 hit combo! Well, let's hope you never have to. Yeah, believe me, hitting 1,000 takes a while. I should know. Oh, should you? Huh, I've gotten 1,000 hit combos. I get them all the time. Forever! Yeah, of course you do. Come on, time to go. <laughs> Welcome back. the best selection Here are those materials you asked for, Fail. Great! Here's your payment. If you're willing, I could use your help again. I've got one last job for you, Dust. There's a strange flying creature called a Florn that lives around these parts. Can shoot balls of electricity from its tentacles. A real nasty customer. If you could gather three Florn tentacles and three Florn sparks, I can use them to reinforce our guard's armor and give their weapons a bit of an extra kick. I'll pay a premium for them that you won't get from the shops around here.
Welcome back. Here are those materials you asked for, Fail. Great! Here's your payment. I think that's it. I have everything I need thanks to you. Thank you, Dust. I think we're set on materials. Best of luck out there. about before. I was so scared I forgot to thank you. Don't worry about it. Are you going to be okay? Yes, I'm safe here with Mosca. I just... I have a lot to think about. Stay safe out there, okay? Dust, I owe you so much. I can't believe what Sarahi has been through. Without your help, well, I, I just don't want to think about it. Is she going to be alright? Yeah. I'm taking care of her. She's still pretty shaken. She lost a lot of friends. Hey, um, I know this might sound a little weird, but could I get your autograph? Wait, what? Well, it's just, after everything you've done for us, for this village, for everyone, really, I'd really like something to remember a true hero by. I honestly don't feel like too much of a hero. Oh, come on, don't be such a downer. Hey, I'll sign it too. Every hero needs a sidekick. Yes, usually for comic relief. Hey! Oh darn it! I don't have any paper on me. Could you grab some from the shop? Here's some money. I'd go get it myself, but I'm a... sort of... blacklisted. How was I supposed to know those displays would fall over so easily? Don't worry, I'll go get your paper for you. All right, Mosca. This feels a bit strange, but here we go. What do you want your autograph to say? How about to Mosca, my greatest fan? All right, there you go. Your friend can sign it too. Aha! Uh -huh. There you go. What is that? A paw print? What? That's how we sign our names. See, it says right there. Big jit. Well, uh, great. <laughs> this is great. You two are just... just swell. Good luck out there, and thanks again for saving Sarahi. I'll never forget it. Always a pleasure to see you guys. it means to you, Bopo. Well, 
I don't have much to offer. Besides from this funny rock, it don't seem to do anything down here in Mud Pot, but it looks pretty neat. Here, it's all yours. Thanks, Bopo. We had our moment together, me and Pa. Taking a walk through the snow, building a fort, watching all those flakes fall from the sky. I know none of it were real, but I'll always have this memory now, thanks to you. I've just got to be strong now, for Mama. Thanks so much, Dust, for everything. Gotta be strong now. For Mama. Thanks so much, Dust. For everything. trends.